What's going on guys, Ryo and Jetta Patrol back with another video today. I have something quite ridiculous to unbox. I'm actually quite beyond excited. Let's get started. That's right guys, Ryan back with another video today. We're gonna to be unboxing and building and posing my brand new custom 1-6 scale Iron Scavenger from Jazz Inc. Dioramas. I am super stoked for this. I have a Death Star Diorama 2.0 that I got, not, I guess it's been a minute since I got it from those guys. And I knew that whatever they made would be amazing. And when I saw this piece, oh, dude, had to, I just had to have it. I had to have it. So I paid for this thing. They shipped it. I've got one of the first pieces here and uh, for my own collection. And I, I'm just stoked. I'm super stoked for this. To say that there are not enough villains in collections is an understatement. We need more villains. And sometimes you got to wait a little while to get something as awesome as this. So I've got this giant box. We're going to set it up. I'm going to show you a whole unboxing thing. I'll put a link down in the description below if you want to pick one up for yourself. This one is going to take up some space. All right, guys, we've got the package right here. Let's take a look at this. The first layer is going to just be a super thin layer of foam. I'm gonna get that out of here. We've got our figure and we've got some of the display options, some of the support stands for the whole wingsuit and everything going on. But let's first take a look at this figure. And I will tell you, I took a quick peek at this earlier and uh, it's quite fantastic. I did remove the little plastic cover that comes over the, the head sculpt or the dome, if you will. This thing is awesome. Look at this, the detail is glorious. I will tell you the, the hair, the fur thing is a little bit unruly and you gotta, you know, Futs with that just a little bit, but uh, once you get it down, I think it's going to look fantastic. Look at this. This is an actual real leather jacket. This is not pleather. It's not synthetic. It's not anything. It's 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 the real deal. Which and it looked fantastic. It's like a dark espresso brown. It is gorgeous, along with all the buckles. I mean, this thing is packed full of details. I mean, it, it, it is a bunch. Just I know everybody wants to see this thing. This is the backpack. This little piece is supposed to come off, I believe, based on instructions. And the wings actually bolt on here via a screw or a couple screws. So super supportive. Uh, but you can see there's nice weathering going on down here on this side. Uh, I mean, just really, really well done. I mean, Jazz Inc. Dioramas does not, they, they just don't skip steps. This thing is fantastic. Uh, but it does have a couple uh, things down here at the bottom, which I've got to get the little foam pieces off. These are little talons. They are art articulated. So we'll get all these bits and pieces off, but this thing, just first impressions, the figure itself, whew, good looking. So I'm going to put him to the side and let's see if I can do this. You go over there. All right. So what else is in this layer? We've got a, um, pretty sure this is one of the pieces that attaches the wings. So right there, I believe this comes apart. So yep, there's some screws that actually bolt into the back of the figure. This is what attaches to the wings and then this bolts onto the actual figure. So we'll have to deal with that. We got some support pieces. Let's see if we can get these out of here. Maybe. That's packed very well. I will tell you, this thing showed up in like two days. I ordered it. Uh, I talked to, uh, talked to you. I can't even get that piece out. That's in there pretty good. And um, shipped it and via FedEx, uh, it, it arrived in two days which is unheard of because typically they take a little bit longer for me. Uh, a couple support pieces, we'll get these out of here. Uh, we do have also in there is a bag full of screws and bolts and Allen wrenches and different screwdrivers and whatever we need to actually put the thing together. It, this is essentially a Build-A-Figure uh, when you start getting into the display options of this guy and putting the wings on there. And this is packaged very, very well. So I'm gonna try not I'm gonna try not to break it right out of the box, but come here, you. It's in there quite well. There, there we go. Yeah, these are quite nice. So we'll get uh, that layer out of here because I know everybody wants to look at the wings, and I do too. That is a that is a substantial layer. All right, we've got our first wing. So we're actually gonna have two, obviously two wings. We've got one on one side, one on the other. We've got two different layers, but look at this thing. Just look at the size. That was the size of the entire box. <laughs> that thing is crazy. Look at the detail on the turbine. Absolutely glorious. Nice little like army military green going on here, all drab. 
And then uh, nice weathering going on here and all like the little dry brushing going on. Silver dry brushing and damage going on in the turbine. And check this out. This is one of my favorite parts. The turbine spins. How awesome is that? That is super cool. Articulated pieces. This is where it's going to connect into uh, that little backpack we looked at just a minute ago. So we're going to get that wing out of here. We should have one more underneath, which we do. So I'm going to get this one out of here. I mean, look at these two, these are huge. All right, so what else is in here? There should be, oh yeah, the, dis the actual uh, display stand is underneath another layer. <laughs> okay, so um, these are some couple of display options. These are gonna be one display option, but this is gonna be the dynamic flight stands if you wanna have them up in the air. So we also have this nice little display base, which is huge as well. So we'll get you out of here. We got our dynamic flight poles, which are definitely sturdy. I don't think that's gonna be a problem. So I'm super excited to see how we're gonna be able to pose this guy up. And then we get some acrylic pieces that are not blue. These are clear. These are just blue pieces of uh, protective film on top of these guys, which we're gonna to need to make our vulture fly. So we got that going on here. So I think that is gonna be it. The uh, instructions for how to put this together are actually a PDF. They'll email you. So I'm going to get to that, start building, and uh, see what we can do. Before we get too far into the building process, let me go ahead and show you case these uh, extra pieces and stuff we've got going on. So here is the stand that's going to have this. It's got this like uh, diamond plate look to it, which is nice, nice weathering going on. we got some nice rivets and stuff going on uh, in the midsection. And you can see like the weathering, like he's... Uh, He's been stepping on this thing, walking on and off this platform. These are the parts right here where your dynamic stands are gonna connect, or those other pieces, which are uh, these guys right here. These are also gonna connect via a screw. So there's a screw that goes down there in the bottom. These go in here and they literally screw in there to be able to support uh, the weight of our scavenger. This thing looks fantastic. You can see the difference in colors. Nice little gunmetal action going on here. And then underneath, you can kind of see the construction where those bolts go in here and connect either the dynamic flight stands or the, uh, I guess the rack is a better term for it, uh, where you can just have the wings kind of set up uh, on display. So there's that. That's actually a pretty cool piece. And uh, these, get that out of here. Uh, these are actually one of the one of the arms. You get two of these, so obviously one for right and one for left. And these are actually, I guess, a friction deal right here. And you can actually maneuver these based on whatever you need it to do. Uh, and it just goes, there's a screw down there. And uh, it's a pretty nice little piece. So nice little chunky piece. This, nothing in here is exorbitantly heavy, which I'm actually pretty happy about. So I was kind of concerned about the weight of uh, the wings and the wear and tear on the body and that kind of stuff. But even this stuff on the display is actually fairly light. It's not die cast. Uh, so that's kind of that kind of nice. Here's our dynamic our dynamic flight stand. We've seen these before. This is uh, definitely a more sturdy one than, than I'm used to. Uh, so I think this is gonna be just fine. I know he tried an acrylic rod uh, for a while, to see, you know, so he wouldn't have to see this. Uh, then he said that over time, the weight, it just, the, the acrylic rod gave up. And so we came up with this. So these little pieces right here are actually gonna connect to those acrylic pieces that we saw earlier. And then this is gonna bolt down on that stand that we just looked at. So we've got that and we got some wings. These wings, oh, just give you an idea of scale. Here's the figure. Here's the figure. There's the wing. There's two wings, crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So just saying this wing, the, the way it's painted is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I knew we look quick look at it earlier, but I just want to take some more time and enjoy this because the, the level of detail and the paint applications on this are what we should, I, I it's what I expected because I have some other pieces from him, um, but it's absolutely what I expected. And it absolutely delivered. These pieces right here are amazing. Uh, this turbine actually rotates. However you want to go there. And then, like I said earlier, the spins, which is amazing. I didn't expect that. That's just a nice touch. So I'm really quite happy about that piece right here you can do. Uh, so there are some articulated points, one of them being right here. And I'm pretty sure you want to bend them here versus you know bend them over here, whatever you want to do. Uh, but pretty good range of motion right there. So you can, have, you can have them folded. Depending on your display space, you might need it to bend one way or the other, or depending on the pose. You know, I don't know how we're going to pose this guy yet. 
All right, guys, so we got him uh, just a simple pose. I've got the wings put together. I've got it on the gantry system in the back. And uh, I just, this thing looks absolutely gorgeous. So I do have, I got a little measuring tape out here to give you guys an idea of scale. Uh, it is quite large, but look at this figure. It is gorgeous. I mean, the, the leather, which is actual real leather, not pleather or anything like that. Then we got the detail on the wings, the coloring, the weathering. I mean, it just, it looks fantastic. And the exoskeleton on the figure, it, this thing does rule out about 48 inches. So it's four feet wide from wingtip to wingtip. It is quite large, but it looks the part. It is just, I mean, this is, uh, this is a Hulkbuster style epic piece for your collection. And you can see it right here. It just looks great. The exoskeleton on the actual figure uh, is not die cast. It is plastic. So you want to be careful when you're kind of manipulating it a little bit. Um, but as you can see right here, if you want to have a simple pose with the figure off of the wings, literally standing on the platform, it looks great like that. And probably I'm going to end up like that, but uh, we'll see. And I, I'm not 100% sure yet, uh, but this thing is just absolutely gorgeous. I would, I would definitely recommend just based on the initial reaction here, based on this, I would recommend picking it up. But you can see the detail going on this thing. It is, I mean, you got the brass going on. You've got the silvers. You got the dry brushing. You've got Spidey coming into the fold to have a little fun here for just to give you an idea of scale. So I did break out my homemade suit Spider-Man just to give you an idea of what a posing display option right here as he's getting ready to tackle the Vulture. Obviously, we're going to do a lot more poses than this, but this is just one idea where it wouldn't take up a lot of space vertically uh, if you've got them on the gantry system. But uh, if you wanted to uh, just have something like when you walk into your collection room and if somebody saw this, they would just be in awe. There's Spidey's butt, by the way. Uh, this figure is gorgeous. A uh, little bit of uh, limited on the range of motion just due to the exoskeleton, but you can check out how the, the lights kind of passing through those turbines and the dry brushing. It, it's, I, I don't want to tell you, man, in person, Jazz Inc., Dioramas, you guys, Yost over there, man, you guys knocked it out of the park. Uh, I'm going to have to deal with a little fur action, and I did talk to him about that. They're going to make some kind of uh, modifications on the packaging. But check out the claws, the articulated claws on the boots. It, it's it's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. So I'm having a lot of fun posing this guy, and I can't wait to get him actually up in the air because he does have those dynamic rods where you can actually get him flying up in the air. We're definitely going to do that. Uh, but just right here, just a simple, I mean, I don't want to call it museum, but it kind of is. He's just kind of sitting there staring at Spidey. Uh, with the wings in the background. This is absolutely gorgeous. So I wanted to do something with uh, Spider here with uh, Far From Home homemade suit and with the Vulture, but without the wings. So the wings are in the background just because they look cool. But um, if you remember the final fight, this is what we got. How epic of a display is that? So we got Peter rescuing the Vulture. Yes, with no stand. No joke. Not supported by anything. Literally supporting the weight of, uh, of the Vulture. Now, we don't have a Michael Keaton portrait with this figure, but you get the same effect. Absolutely un freaking believable So maybe you want to have yours displayed like this in the Detoff. Spoiler, maybe that's something that's coming up on the channel with the grid. You know, maybe you'll see this in there. I don't know. And maybe you want to have the wings because they're so large on top of your uh, cabinets. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have room. I have a spot for them, I think. Uh, so we'll see how it plays out with the other poses in this video. But that is absolutely fire. Man, I love posing figures. I'm just, you know, it's just one of those things. I absolutely love it. So just in case you're wondering, uh, just got one foot there. That foot's turned to the side just to give a little bit more support. Uh, I've got one arm wrapped around that oh, that leg, one arm wrapped around that one, and that's pretty much it. He's just balanced, and it looks amazing. All right, guys, and just like that, we've got him in flight mode. So a couple things about this. Uh, one, he is about 21 inches tall at the tallest mark uh, right there where the frame is. I did put some batteries in there, so hopefully you can see the eyes kind of poking through there, the light-up feature. Uh, didn't come with any batteries, uh, but I happen to have... Uh, you know, a lot of Iron Man figures, so I have batteries for that, so it's super simple. Not much of an issue there. But this thing is actually pretty stinking cool. So one thing I would uh, I would recommend, maybe something I might have to modify on mine, or it might be an improvement they make 
on the uh, later batches is the width of this acrylic support. So the way this thing works, you got these uh, dynamic rods that mount down here and just bolt in like we saw earlier through these significantly strong metal rods, right? And then these guys right here bolt up right there. There's uh, four screws on, on each side of this little acrylic. It's two pieces of acrylic. It's one there and one there. And the wings sit in there just as a support, which is fine. It's a good design. My only thing I wish would happen is uh, the width of the acrylic. So let me show you this. So on this side, you got the acrylic there and you can actually articulate this. I'm trying to do this handheld, so bear with me. But you can actually articulate this wing right here. You see how it like barely fits right there. But if I go to this side, I can't articulate that one at all. So it's about a little, over, maybe almost an inch that should be trimmed off of there, in my opinion, so you could articulate both wings. Because if I can get this wing right here articulated a little more, you get a little bit more, uh, I don't know, you get, op get posing options, right? So that's, an, that's a possibility of uh, improvement. It could be made. Or just, honestly, I just could just trim it myself and be done with it. But this thing looks pretty thick and sick on the, uh, on the flight stand. I will tell you, I have messed around with it just a little bit on this uh, dynamic poles. They are plenty strong. I've had this guy leaning forward, which when we get to the posing part of this um, setup, I'll show you that. But um, he looks, I mean, you guys tell me, he looks pretty cool kind of flying in the air. So I think we can do a little bit better in the posing. So let's get to it. All right, so Spidey's got himself in a little bit of trouble as he's known to be you know, capable of. So I do have uh, the Vulture Iron Scavenger up there on top in a little bit of a more articulated pose. And I'll show you the dynamic rod in a second, but this is uh, kind of what we got going on. If I back this guy up, this is what we've got. So depending on how you want to display yours, this might be something you come up with. Obviously, the cool thing about having villains is you can obviously fight your heroes and that makes a lot of fun. So there's Spidey, simple pose for Spidey, nothing really super crazy for him. Just a normal thwipping, thwipping action. I guess I could rotate him around. A little thwipping action if you are curious to see what the heck he looks like. Uh, that's what he looks like, so there he is. All right, I got Spidey out of the way. Let me show you what we've got going on. So the dynamic rods, I've got them bent fairly well. They are pretty freaking sturdy. If I get rotate this guy a little bit, you can see that's kind of like some bend I've got in it. Now, one thing you want to do when you're bending this thing is you want to make sure you bend them both at the same time because obviously there is a parallel piece of acrylic there and it's not going to bend. So you got to make sure you got to make sure you bend both of these at the same time with the same amount of pressure or else you're going to crack that and then you're going to have a problem. So be careful with that. And uh, I think you're going to be okay, uh, but uh, just you know, something to be watch out for. This is what I was talking about with the range of motion on the wings. It looks glorious, but I can only articulate this one side. Uh, so I think that's going to be a pretty simple fix. I don't not going to be a terrible issue, I don't think. Uh, but I think that looks fantastic. And of course, we got our our uh, vulture guy right here. So my batteries are dying. I can't tell. That visor is really dark. Oh no, there's, I guess they're still in there. They're still going on. So anyways, it might just be the camera settings I've got going on. But this guy is absolutely glorious. Anybody who picks this up for their collection, you're gonna be super happy with it, I think. So we're gonna do, I don't know, a couple more poses. So let's have some fun. All right, guys, one last pose before you uh, wrap up this thing. So let me let me give you some final thoughts before I show you kind of like the, the what we've got going on here. One, uh, the visor, uh, you might need a little bit of glue. The actual visor part pops off occasionally. Uh, so when you're maneuvering the head around, so be mindful about that. Uh, not a big deal, just use a little bit of glue. Uh, the arms and the joints in here, you want to be very careful on how you manipulate those. Look at the instructions well and just look at how they bend. And uh, just be careful with those. Uh, again, these uh, shoulder joints don't want to come out away from the body too far. So you want to be mindful of that. The legs don't want to come out. You know, they don't want to do splits or anything like that because you've got these uh, braces right there. You want to make sure you don't you know mess with those. And wherever there is a hinge, make sure if you're bending it, grab in that general area. Uh, don't get too much leverage on it and uh, end up breaking something. So be mindful of that. So there you go. Uh, the light up function 
is my batteries are dead. I can't tell. Hard to say. Anyways, yeah, I think my batteries are dead, but that, that's just, that's on me. I, uh, other than the, the couple of nitpicks I had, which was the acrylic stand, um, just with the wing manipulation. And I think that's a very simple fix. Uh, if that's something you want to do, or maybe, uh, maybe he fixes that. I don't know, but that's just a, I don't, it might be that way just for safety purposes as well. So, uh, I'm not an engineer. Don't know. Uh, but I will tell you the paint applications on this are glorious. The dynamic stand is great. You, uh, <laughs> because of the weight of this guy, he, uh, you, you're not, don't, don't go too crazy with it. Uh, I found that if I went too far, the weight of it, just, uh, the rod wouldn't support. So I bent it back up just a little bit. And like I said earlier, if you are maneuvering these rods, make sure you move them at the same time. So, uh, just an idea for my display. I think I'm probably going to display mine with the gantry just cause I think that looks pretty cool. And then I don't have to worry about really anything. And so I'm probably going to display mine that way, but I don't know. You have to wait till the updated collection tour for that. So here we go. Final pose right here. And I thought this was super cool. And this is a fun way to have it on the display. So I think this is a lot of fun. So we've obviously got our Spider-Man homecoming hanging back out here in the background with some web action that uh, this is actually a custom webbing. Uh, it's actually fairly long, but custom webbing. And we've got our guy down there just kind of, you know, doing his thing. Look at all kinds of awesome. So I think this is a pretty fun way to pose your uh, vulture if you decide to get one. So again, this is an unlicensed product. This is a custom figure I got for my own collection. So this isn't like a promo thing. I paid for this, added it to my set. And um, yeah, I'm not receiving anything that's like promotion or anything like that out of this. This is just something that I wanted for my set because I love Spider-Man. I love Spider-Man Homecoming. And I think this is actually super cool. So if you want to pick one of these up, I'll put a link in the description below. I highly doubt there's going to be a lot of these made just due to the, I mean, it's, it's not the least expensive piece out there. It's kind of pricey. Um, but for what it is, it's, <laughs> it's quite glorious. It is quite glorious. So I would highly recommend it if you've got the space uh, budget. And if you just really like Spider-Man Homecoming or Vulture or Michael Keaton or anything like that, this I think I might have said earlier, has Hulkbuster presence. It is unbelievable, and uh, I highly recommend it. So hope you guys like this video. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. This is a good place to be. And uh, join the Facebook group, link down below. And there's also a link to this Iron Scavenger if you want to pick one up for yourself. But uh, from Vulture and Spidey, collect what you like. We'll see you next time.